Alto. You're in Palo Alto <laughs> yeah. and um, not Washington, I'm in, D.C. I'm, in, I'm at Tesla uh, Global Engineering Headquarters in Palo Alto. Yeah. So no more Washington, D.C. You're back at work. You're focused. Yeah? Uh, yeah. I haven't been to D.C. since May. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, was a, that was a hell of a side quest. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good side Any lessons from your time in Washington, D.C.? Uh, the government is basically unfixable. <laughs> <laughs> Elon, <laughs> o- o- only, o- only. I applaud David's uh, noble efforts in this. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, good to, it's, it's good to have talented people in the administration. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, if you look at our national debt, which is uh, insanely high, uh, the interest payments exceed the uh, Defense Department, I guess, sorry, War Department uh, <laughs> budget. Um, and um, they keep rising. So if AI and robots don't solve our national debt, we're, we're toast. Which is a great segue. Um, Optimus <laughs> is, um, I think, going to be the greatest uh, product in the history of humanity, what's the progress like and how much of your, how many of your cycles are going specifically to Optimus? What's the timeline? I think you're on version three, maybe four. Tell us everything. Uh, well, yeah, no, everything would take a long time. We've got um, time. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, we're, we're finalizing the design of Optimus version three, and uh, that, that really is going to be a very remarkable robot. Um, it will have the, essentially the manual dexterity of a human, so meaning a very complex hand, um, a, the, a, an AI mind that can navigate and comprehend reality, um, and we made in very high volume. Uh, those are the three things that are missing. Like, if you see any other um, robotics uh, company, they're missing those three things. Those are the three really hard things. Um, and uh, I, I, I spend actually at this point um, it, it might be more of my mental cycles than anything, anything else, any other single thing on Optimus. Uh, that's that, that's solving for uh, real-world AI, uh, all of the electromechanical issues of Optimus, the, the supply chain and production challenges of it, because we have, there is no supply chain that exists for humanoid robots. So it has to be, we have to recreate it from scratch, um, and which requires doing a lot of vertical integration. Um, n- none of the actuators in Optimus um, are available from an existing supply chain. Um, so, but I, I think it is accurate to say that if successful, Optimus will be the biggest product ever. And the cost of it at scale, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars a robot. What, what do you think the first wave of them will cost? And yeah, when will we be able to buy one to work on the ranch? I think that the, the marginal cost of production. Once you hit a million units per year, uh, is probably around the twenty thousand dollar range. Uh, it, it it sort of depends on how much you spend on the AI chip in the in the uh, robot, um, and you need to achieve a lot of efficiencies in the actuators. Uh, there are um, twenty six actuators per arm. Like 26 electric, like motors, gearboxes, and power electronics. Um, so, so, it, but, but the, the 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 AI chip will be pretty expensive. Like that, that might be like five five or six thousand dollars of the of the bill of materials, maybe more. Um, and um, but but so I but I think at volume, at a million units a year, the the production. Cost is probably on the order of twenty thousand dollars, maybe twenty-five, something like that, and um, the price will be as a function of demand. 
Elon, um, can you maybe explain to everybody why the hand is so important to get right and why, you know, the actuator design is so unique and, you know, why it's so difficult, why nobody makes it and why you have to start there almost to build the rest of the, the robot properly? Well, it turns out the human hands are incredibly, they've evolved to, this, to be this incredibly sophisticated machine. Like the your hand is you know, an, an, actually a remarkable thing. It's, look, look closely at your hands. <laughs> and, and think of all the things you can do with your hands, which is a lot. <laughs> I can think um, of many things. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking about something. <laughs> you know, your, your hand's a very versatile instrument. Yeah. You can um, give him a high five. <laughs> very versatile. Um, you know, you, you, you can swing a baseball bat. You can uh, thread needles. You, you can you put thread in a needle. Uh, you can play the piano with violin. Um, you know, you could disassemble or assemble a car. The hands are in incredibly versatile instruments. Um, and... Um, most of the muscles of, of, of the hand are, are actually in the forearm. So your, your hand is kind of like a, like, a, like, it's like a puppet. Like it's mostly a puppet. The, mus the muscles are coming from the forearm and they're pulling the tendons, uh, which are, you know, it, also human tendon designs in, or, or human, human tendon evolution is incredibly good. Um, so you, you've got this web of tendons, you, you, you've got, um, I think, I think the human hand is something like, depending on how you count it, 27 or 28 degrees of freedom per, you know, in, in the hand. It's, uh, it's amazing. So in, in order to create a robot that can uh, be a generalized uh, humanoid, you, you must solve the, hand, the hands problem. Yeah. We, um, had, uh, we had REM. It's, it's got hands, knees hands. Yeah. And so <laughs> is it like uh, when you were first building Tesla where the supply chain doesn't exist and now you have to go out and find folks to work with and you know build all this vertical integration get support is it is it literally like it's just nowhere to be found and you're going to have to build yes. all of this stuff up yes we, we we could not actually buy the actuators for any amount of money they simply didn't exist even though there are i don't know 10 20 000 electric motors out there of various sizes and shapes um we've had to design uh, every electric motor gearbox um, and, of, and the controlling electronics from scratch, basically from physics first principles. Yeah. Well, the um, good news is that, you've got a lot of experience with factories over the last couple of decades. So yeah. how challenging is this versus Cybertruck, Model Y, Model X. Gigafactory, you know, the, the, yeah, the Fabergé egg known as the Model X. Yeah. Right. Um, it's harder than any, any of those things. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> much harder, significantly. Yeah, starships. Yes, well, harder than starships. Or no, no, not hard. <laughs> starships harder. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Harder. So somewhere between uh, a Model X and a Starship. <laughs> yeah. Is it is yeah. the what's harder, the hardware or the software? Right now, we're struggling with the the final design of the hardware. Like I said, it's really primarily the hand. Not to just, just dismiss the rest of the robot, the rest of it's also uh, important, but, but the hands are, the hands inclusive of the forearm are a majority of the engineering difficulty of the entire robot. And then let, let's assume you get past the hardware challenges. How much do you sort of get for free um, based on all the progress that's happening with LLMs? Will, you know, will consumers just be able to interact with this, talk to the robot, ask oh, yeah. it to do things, it'll understand? And sort of, oh, yeah. Sure. yeah. Yeah, no problem. 